Brent yawned. It had been a long day of traveling. Lots of riding, some walking, and some more riding. The only excitement he had was when he brought down a deer with his axe. Yep, boring day. And he had another day ahead of him tomorrow. And the day after that. Just like the days before. The adventurer wasn't looking forward to it. Travel was boring. If only he could go faster, or at least have a companion. He found an old abandoned barn covered in vines. Boards had fallen out. The owners were long gone. Regardless, it would get him out of the weather if it turned foul. He was almost hoping for it to turn bad just to break up his boredom as he made his dinner. Deer blood dripped from his hands as he set the meat on skewers over the fire. From the heat, he removed his bulky armor. What he really wanted was a companion, like that Amazon. She was a delight. As he voiced his desire, he heard the crumple of grass. Instinctively, he grabbed his iron axe, but relaxed as he saw a woman in a long green dress that barely brushed the grass. He instantly relaxed at her approach. God, she was gorgeous. His ideal woman, that he was sure. Silently, she sat down beside him. Before Brent knew it, he was under her spell. Welcome to Mythical Phylogeny Adventures. I'm your guide, Jason. Today, we are looking at a blood-sucking fairy of desire, the Babin Shi. Let's see if we can protect yourself from it. Bubbin She is a fairy from Scottish lore. She is a bloodsucker and a vicious creature to be sure. A shapeshifter that will look like a deer or a hooded raven, but is usually seen as a woman in a green dress and deer hooved feet. The long dress is used to conceal her feet. She appears at night to travelers, notably hunters, lured in by the smell of blood. She can read minds and will change her appearance to suit the men that she is approaching. But it isn't until a person vocalizes their longing for a companion that she will appear. Her beauty is enticing with mesmerizing eyes, which she bewitches her victims with. There are a few stories about her. Her origin speaks of a vain woman whose boasting drew the attention of the Morrigan, the goddess of death. She cursed the woman, turning her into a fairy which drained blood from others. The other stories tend to follow a similar tale. It speaks of a group of hunters that stay in a hut or cave after a long day or the horses are tied up outside. One of them takes out a flute and begins to play while the others dance. They speak of wishing for women or their wives with them. That is when four women show up, each of them beautiful and pairs up with the man who finds them the most attractive. Three dance with the men, but the last stays by the musician and she begins to sing. The horse outside makes a noise that startles the musician and his foot kicks the woman's, only for him to discover her hooved feet. He sprints away and the woman gives chase. With a long leap, he jumps onto his horse, who rears up at the woman. It kicks out with its feet. The Babin she recoils from its iron horseshoes. She lashes at the horse, but never reaches it, and the man on its back until the sun rises where she vanishes. Timidly, the man gets off the horse and checks on his friends, but finds them drained of blood and their chests torn open. They died while in an intimate embrace with the Babin Shi. A grim way to begin your day for sure. There are a few other versions. In one, a man had a dog with him and didn't wish for his wife to be with him. When the Babin Shi approached, the dog became aggressive and protected the man. This tells us much of the Babin Shi. She is nocturnal, has an aversion to sunlight and a weakness to iron. Let's start with the last one. 
It depends on the tail, but most refer to it as a weakness to only cold iron. Okay, that doesn't mean iron that happens to be cold, but a type of iron. Depending on the source, it could either be wrought iron with a low carbon content of 0.05% or cast iron with a slightly higher carbon content of 2%. A few say it is meteorite iron, but that is too rare to specify and doesn't reliably work with the stories. Medieval horseshoes are made of iron, but most sources don't give a detailed description on the type of iron sadly. But it would seem that any form of iron will work. I don't know if steel will work against this fairy. It would depend on how the carbon percentage of steel affects it. So why the iron issue? We have seen this before with boggarts and other fairy creatures. It seems that iron can be used to drain the power of fairies. A magical energy sink of sorts. With enough magical energy drained, potentially fatal. Next, we need to look at the sunlight. There is a lot of debate on whether she is weak to sunlight or just avoids it. Some sources say that she will flee while others that she will die in sunlight. Potentially, if fatal, sunlight would break down the magical energies which sustains her potentially dispelling illusions if she survives. As we see with the story, when a person sees her hooves, their hypnotic control breaks, and the person will flee as far as they can before being caught by the Baba and she. She is far faster and stronger than a human. Her magic loses its effectiveness when known, meaning if exposed, she loses that edge. Her spells are fragile, it seems. Sunlight may show her truest form. Is she a vampire? Generally, vampires of all breeds drink blood, use seduction, control, and are weak to light. So potentially, she could be put in a category of vampire. Doubly so, if by being afflicted with the Morgan's curse created such a monster. The question does come down to what a fairy is though. Sadly, the term is a broad brush, which covers everything from Dullahan to pixies to brownies and to bogarts and even elves and dwarves. It is a large category. How does she read minds? Conceptually, it would mean being able to understand the electrical currents in another person's brain. A better option could be a spell each person sees differently. Trust me, I'm going to have to do a full video on how mind reading would really work, and it's a mess. Conceptually possible, but would leave them exceedingly sensitive to any lightning or electrical fields. If we go with the glamour illusion spell to create the appearance, we can understand the deer in raven-like forms. But why not hide the feet? It could be because that the feet are touching the ground and creating the illusion of the feet matching the sounds and proper gait pattern would be exceedingly complicated to achieve and it is easier to just hide them with the dress. I mean, if you meet a gorgeous woman who looks like your ideal woman, are you going to be looking at her feet? There is a good chance not, doubly so while dancing closely your bodies pressed against each other. Closer you get, the easier it would be for her to bite your throat or shove her hand into your chest. So what does she really look like? We can assume deer feet, but if she can fly while in raven form, perhaps wings. And if she is going to cut a person open, she'll need claws of some sort and probably sharp teeth does sound like a succubus. She is lured in by the smell of blood, which means that a strong sense of smell, potentially indicating a longer snout like a dog. So how does one escape Baba and she? Let's start with the basics. If you're in the woods, 
Remove the blood from your clothes. Bathe and keep yourself clean. Use water or magic. Your choice. They only appear after you verbalize your desire. If you do speak, be sure to invoke God's name in protection. The Baban Shi is meant as a warning against the lust and desires being granted in unwanted ways. Next, if a woman approaches you in the woods, have her show you her feet. Just be careful how you phrase it. You don't want to come off lewd with a foot fetish. After that, she seeks to dance and then intimacy. Don't get close, at least until you know what she is. How do you do that if the feet didn't work? Iron and sunlight. Cold iron was a common metal, it seems, used in horseshoes and fence gates. Just have her touch one and see what happens. If nothing happens, then you are good. If she responds, well, now you know. But all that has a problem. Her gaze is hypnotic. It can leave you distracted, hard to focus. Remember what you need to do, think clearly, and, oh, oh, what was I saying? Oh yes, how do we break that? That is the real issue. From our story, there is an option. Man's best friend. Bring a dog. They can detect Bob and she. Perhaps the mind of a dog can't be read, or their sense of smell can't be tricked. Regardless, you want a dog. Yet there is another opening. What is your armor made of? Iron and maybe steel. What about your weapon and shield? There is a good chance that it is iron. Or contains iron in some form. If she touches it, it'll push her back and break the spell. If not, well, she'll bring you to dance and get closer. From there, you've made a mistake and she'll probably kill you. So let's assume that you discovered her before that. She is said to be stronger and fatter than a human. We assume that she can fly and has claws. You'll need to be ready for all of that. But you don't need to win the fight. Just stall until sunrise. Yeah, I know that can be hours away. But could faith magic fix that? Perhaps. It could be deadly to her if done right. If not, dispelling magic could scare her a bit. Other forms of magic could aid. None particularly stand out. For armor, anything made of iron. No need for gambeson. But it might protect a little against her claws. But anything of iron is still better. The main thing is not to take it off. Yes, I know sleeping with your armor off is much more comfortable. But safety while out in the wilds it is more important that you make it back from your adventure. Could you lace your blood with a poison as a precaution? Potentially yes, but by the time she drinks it, she has probably disemboweled you. Losing too much blood to save herself while she gets sick and vomits up her meal. Worst case, a little bit of food poisoning. There isn't a particular type of poison to use here, unless you want to pump a bunch of iron into your own blood. But no, that would leave you sick and probably dead. Do not try that. Bob and she is a dangerous foe. While superior to humans physically, she likes to end the fight before beginning. Seduction and stealth are her trademarks. She waits until you confess your weakness before she ventures forth. You may think that she is a coward, but no, she is just a cunning predator. Even in a straight up fight, she is quick and fast, truly worth of a 5 of 10 for difficulty. But her weakness to iron and a potential one to sunlight does put her at a disadvantage if prepared. Still, if things go her way, those aren't an issue. This will be a short session. There is nothing that I would want from Bob and Shi. She is too unreliable to be an ally. 
too high a risk of having her seduce, betray, and kill you. Yeah, you could try luring a foe into her territory as a trap, and a way to kill them without getting your hands physically dirty. You can bring her in by spilling blood of deer around your foe, but you need them to call out for a female companion, for Bob and she will appear before them. Best to just avoid her and not deal with the risks. Brent shuffled about beside his female guest. She was so pretty, and funny, and sweet, and... And, and, what was he thinking? Bah, it didn't matter. She was here. She offered her hand and he took it. Together, they began to spin and twirl. Oh, if only there was music. That would be so nice to dance to. She leaned in close. Her lips were so close to him. The large man took a step and caught the hem of her dress. She toppled backwards with her foot exposed. Brent tensed up when he saw the cloven feet. Her spell broke in an instant when her secret was exposed. They both moved. Brent took off for his axe, but so did the woman. With an unnatural speed, she caught up with and tackled him. They landed on the ground in a heap of limbs. She held him in place, but Brent had long limbs. Stretching out his arm, he nabbed the handle of his axe. Blindly, he swung it behind him. Bob and she screeched at the impact, and Brent stood up. He swung his axe, but she evaded and rushed him. He went flying, but swung his axe and struck the foe. She fell to the ground still. Brent breathed heavily as he steadied himself. Oh, he wasn't bored anymore. Bob and she is a dangerous foe who chooses to use stealth, but is fine in a brawl. So long as you have iron on you, you'll do fine. You'll need to stay aware of your surroundings when dealing with her. Thank you for watching, adventurers. Please return next week, where we shall look at Fenrir. Until then, I'll see you on the roads.